since uh, the first time since uh, her run for president over a year ago, Nikki Haley has won a Republican primary. NBC News projects Haley won yesterday's Washington, D.C. Republican primary with more than 60 percent of the vote. She is now the first woman to ever win a Republican primary. Trump did tally three more victories over the weekend in Michigan. The former president won 51 out of the state's 55 delegates that were awarded at the GOP convention caucuses. And in Idaho and Missouri, Trump secured every delegate. Which brings us to Super Tuesday. Republican contests take place tomorrow in 15 states with 865 delegates up for grabs. On Meet the Press yesterday, Nikki Haley didn't rule out continuing past tomorrow's contests and is no longer promising to endorse former President Trump if he becomes the Republican nominee for president. I've always said this needs to be competitive. As long as we are competitive, as long as we are showing that there is a place for us, I'm going to continue to fight. That's always been the case. Would you see yourself as competitive if you didn't win on Super Tuesday any state? Well, usually y'all are the ones that decide what's competitive and what's not. So, you know, y'all decided whether I was competitive in Iowa or New Hampshire or South Carolina. So we're going to continue to just keep pushing through. Let me try it this way. You did sign a pledge, an RNC pledge, yeah. to support the eventual nominee. Do you still feel bound by that pledge? I have always said that I have serious concerns about Donald Trump. I have even more concerns about Joe Biden. So is that a no? Are you bound by the RNC pledge? I the RNC pledge, I mean, at the time of the debate, we had to take it to where would you support the nominee? And you had to, in order to get on that debate stage, you said yes. The RNC is now not the same RNC. Now it's So you're no Trump's longer bound by that pledge? No, I think I'll make what decision I want to make, but that's not something I'm thinking about. Joining us now from Fort Worth, Texas, where Nikki Haley will hold her final rally before Super Tuesday is NBC News correspondent Ali Vitale. Ali, what more are we hearing from the Haley campaign? Will she ditch the pledge? It sounds like it's very much on the table, Mika. And I think in watching that interview on Meet the Press with Christian Welker, but also being in rooms with Haley over the course of the last several weeks, it's clear she wants to keep two questions as live wires. The first is, how long are you going to stay in this race? And certainly that's one that I've asked her, much to her chagrin. It's one that in donor meetings, typically those private conversations can sound a little different than her public conversations. This is one of those rare moments in a campaign where the conversations actually match. Haley is telling voters behind closed doors that she just wants to remain competitive on Super Tuesday. She's going to see what happens after that. She's asking them for money to just help her stay competitive, but that her message, in the words of one person who's heard it, is very moderate, and it's not pie in the sky, in the words of this person. That's notable as she continues to say that she'll stay in this race for as long as she's competitive. That frankly, matches with what her senior staff have told me, too. They have thought through Super Tuesday, and then after that, they will use it as a natural inflection point, it sounds like, even though they don't want to close the door to ending her bid, depending on what the results are tomorrow night. And it's also clear that the other question that she wants to keep alive is what happens with Donald Trump and whether or not she'll endorse him. I take the point that Haley is making there, that the RNC that issued that pledge that she signed was a very different RNC than the one that Trump is attempting to now remake in his own image. Haley is now saying that the RNC that Trump wants is a, quote, slush fund for his legal fees. And certainly she has made a lot of hay over the fact that they are using their funds to pay for his many court cases. That's something that she is pressuring RNC delegates to at least put transparency around, if not put a stop. To. We'll see if that actually is able to manifest given the ways that he has put allies and even family members in charge of the RNC operation. But the fact that Haley is sort of toying with this idea of not endorsing Trump really does make sense, especially when I look back at an interview I did with her a few weeks ago and I asked her point blank as she was talking about his legal woes and the idea that he could be convicted on criminal charges. I asked her bluntly, could you vote for a convicted felon? And she didn't answer that question directly. Again, trying to keep this alive, but also questioning whether or not he would even be the nominee if he were ultimately convicted. I think all of us here would assume he would very much stay in the race. I think running for president is part and parcel to trying to beat these legal issues that he's currently facing. 
But if Haley were to not endorse, I think that that would be the bow on top of her candidacy because it's a long haul gamble, right? I mean, the fact that people think she's staying in if something were to happen to Trump, I'm not actually sure I buy into that. Instead, I think she's making a play for November so that if he loses this election, she can turn around and say, hey, I'm the one that told you so. Let's move the party in a different direction. But again, all of this is on the table. We'll see what actually happens. Wow. NBC's Ali Vitale, thank you very much for your reporting this morning. And uh, Donnie, let, let's follow up on that because I, I completely agree with Ali. As far as the logic goes, if I were advising somebody or if I were in Nikki Haley's position, I would stay in the race all the way through the end. You have no idea what's going to happen with Donald Trump. We've talked about uh, our serious concerns, knowing him for as long as we've known him, serious concerns about his current state. <laughs> it's actually gotten worse, hard to believe, but, it, but, but true. Uh, you, you, you look at his age. Um, you look at all of the, the, the criminal charges that are against him, all of the pressure. I would stay in for all of those reasons, but more than that, I guess it's a lawyer in me. I would be setting up my opening argument for 2028, if Trump ends up winning the nomination in 24 and, of course, losing in the general election, which he does, all the, you know, he's just, since 17, Trump Republicans have just, all they do is lose, it seems, um, are, are, are certainly underperform. But Nikki Haley, after the day after Donald Trump loses, can look at the Republican Party and say, I warned you. We've now lost eight years in a row, and I told you this was going to happen. Follow me. We now have a chance to build a new Republican Party and start winning elections again. Start, start. And uh, true to its yeah, core. Yeah. And, a party and, that's and true to who it is. Not, not just the party of Reagan, but... But the party of Main Street Republicans, the party of small business owners, the party of entrepreneurs, the, the party of immigrants, the party of people who actually love America and believe that America is the greatest country in the world, because we are. You keep, we keep asking on the show, and you bring it up all the time, how many more losses will the Republicans take before they get it? And part of the problem for the Republicans, even with loss after loss, there was nowhere for them to go. Now there's somewhere for them to go. And Nikki Haley has got to yeah. double down on where she is. And really, it would be a shame if she acquiesces at the end and endorses him because everything you just set up is exactly true. She is set up to finally say, we can't lose anymore. As I said, they've been losing, but there's been a blank sheet of paper, nowhere to go. Now there's somewhere to go. And going back to what you just brought up about Trump and we talked about his faculties, I think a question, the Democrats have got to start hanging on to a question. What's wrong with Donald Trump? Is he okay? Instead of saying he's Christian, let's just really keep posing that question because there's something really wrong with him. It's not it's not funny yeah. anymore. It's not funny. And, yeah. and it, it's there's, there's, he's 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 not Look well. He's, he's it's it's almost like and Mika, you said it earlier. If we had a parent that was carrying on like this, we would intervene and we would get help involved and forget about this guy being president of the United States. Is he just okay, period?